The day started with the sun high in the sky and a strong wisp of salty air on the wind. A young man sits alone quietly and watches for incoming ships, with thoughts of a brother who has sailed off months ago. He wears a long-sleeved hide jacket that is part of the common wear of the town folk, and it covers him to his groin and is bound slightly off-center. The sleeves of his jacket are a little wide and reach down to just below his wrists. The jacket has a neckline which reveals part of the fancy shirt worn below and is worn with a large leather belt which is held together by a decorative gold pin. His pants are simple and a little wide and reach down to his soft leather shoes. The shoes are made from a pretty uncommon leather but are otherwise an ordinary design. He sits and looks across the bay with his blue eyes then begins to rub the blonde hair on his top of his head. He wonders why the docks are so quiet this day. Normally, this port is busy with shipping. Traders come from far and near to peddle their wares. But this day, none can be found. Only ships to be found are the ones still in port, tied to the docks, and his sailors are all off in town getting drunk. Then it hits him. He looks to a sign posted to the right of where he's sitting, a huge sign that states, By order of the king, all shipping is halted until further notice. No reason was given, or when the ban will be lifted. So it's just another day that his older brother will not be returning home. Young Master Stormhand, your father has been looking for you. I knew you would be here at the docks, but it's time to get back home. He turns to see a small, silver-haired elf that's shoulder-length in a tight ponytail, revealing a bony, time-worn face. Glinting green eyes, set symmetrically within their sockets. Watch him closely now. He's wearing a long green jacket with gold lining, perfectly wrapped around his body to his knees. It has an intricate but subtle plaid pattern giving it a stylish, casual look. There are eight buttons of his double-breasted jacket, are all buttoned up with the exception of one. A relaxed touch to a classy look. The jacket is the same length all around. It has a vent at the top. There's a single pocket on one side, and there's a breast pocket which contains a stylish pocket square. He's also wearing pants, which copy the style of the jacket, both in color and pattern and they create a perfect balance with his shoes. He's wearing a graceful pair of plain toe-black boots. I told you to call me Peter. I don't like people calling me by my surname. Peter gives him a big frown as he stands from where he was sitting. But this was Orist, after all. He remembered quickly, a trusted friend of the family. He has helped to raise him and they once served the old elven king of the north long before he was even born, and now they serve my family. It wasn't his concern after all, but he still didn't like being called by his surname in public. There are no ships coming in again today, Orist, just like yesterday and the day before that. When will the king let the ships return? Orist just motions for him to follow and puts an arm over his right shoulder as they return to the Stormhand estate. I know you miss your older brother Robert, young master, but there isn't much we can do about it now. He is gone like the others that left before him. That's why the king has given a royal command on the shipping for now, and all trade has come over the land, at least until they find out what happened to the lost ships. Peter looks at him now with tears in his eyes. As they reach the end of the docks, he looks back for a short moment, then over to Orest again. But the king will let others find out what happened, right? Maybe Robert is waiting to return, but just can't because of the order. Maybe if the king would just... Orist motions for him to be calm and to quiet himself, then continues to walk with his back to his home. I'm sure Robert is fine, little one, so don't worry yourself over him today. But we have a party to get to now. After all, it's your 16th birthday, and it's time for your rite of passage. Come! Your father's waiting for you, along with your family and friends. 
I know, Orist. But I was just wishing Robert would come back at least on my birthday. I was wishing very hard that he would. I know, young master. But in time, maybe he will return to us. But for now, let's worry about the here and now. We have a party to attend, after all. And everyone is waiting for you. Maybe tomorrow Robert will return. Or the next day. You really believe that, Orist? Of course I do. After all, we all must have faith. He says with a smile. They continue walking away from the docks, as, like all the other days before it, nothing is coming or going. But one old salty sailor breaks the silence as he wakes up from inside a rowboat on the pier, and he falls out of the small craft onto the dock floor with a thud, making his way to one of the large ships, looking for the one he is crew on. He finds the one and looks it over, then takes out a bottle of rum gives a toast to the ship and drinks it all the way down in one breath. He tosses the bottle back on the ground as it shatters into a thousand pieces and he staggers to board the ship in his very drunk way. He makes it aboard, then slowly he disappears from sight.